Falcon Heavy is the most powerful rocket SpaceX has ever built with characteristics that add a new dimension to rocket launch operations. The Falcon Heavy design consists of a reinforced center core and two Falcon 9 first stages serving as side boosters. The selected three rocket configurations combine to make a strong reusable rocket launched into space in unison but will separate in orbit. After performing their missions, they will land individually on the launch pad or a dropship at the sea. But what is the need to build the acclaimed latest Falcon Heavy rocket without launching it into space? Stay tuned as we explore the unimaginable technique SpaceX has adopted to launch the new Falcon Heavy. Three different rockets stacked together to form a unity before launching it all to space. The Falcon Heavy is the most powerful operational rocket in the world. It can transport roughly 64 metric tons, about 141,000 kilograms into orbit, which is more than twice the payload of the next closest operational rocket, Delta IV Heavy. The Falcon Heavy rocket comprises three Falcon 9 engine cores, each with 27 Merlin engines that provide more than 5 million pounds of thrust at liftoff. Elon's space company, SpaceX, has launched Falcon Heavy, its most powerful system into orbit and history. And the launch was fantastic! SpaceX fired off all 27 engines at the base of Falcon Heavy, the most powerful rocket launched from US territory since NASA's Apollo days after more than two hours of delay due to high-altitude winds. The launch occurred just a few miles away from the Kennedy Space Center's Pad 39A, the same location where Apollo 11 lifted off over half a century ago to transport mankind to the moon for the first time. Shortly after, the huge launch system fired up to 5 million tons of thrust from its tail end and cleared the launch tower without mishap. This was a significant first step toward the long-awaited launch. However, it was merely the beginning of a lengthy flight that intended to transport a cargo consisting of Musk's cherry-red Tesla Roadster on its path to Mars. Musk himself said that he had reservations about the 27 engines working well together when they all fired simultaneously. NASA was infamous for having difficulties with the acoustics from the boom of the engines creating explosions during Saturn V testing. The two side boosters launched the rocket toward orbit, then disconnected from the center core and conducted a flip maneuver to return to Earth, shaking the ground where people admiring it watched from a distance. The fate of the center booster was less certain after both landed safely, as the camera feed on the drone ship in the Atlantic cut out immediately before the landing attempt. Musk tweeted around 45 minutes after the launch that the second stage rocket had been successfully reignited. The top rocket and payload spent several hours cruising in the Van Allen belts, encircling Earth to investigate how the spacecraft fared when bombarded with high radiation. The second stage rocket fired to propel the Roadster and its dummy driver called Starman toward Mars one more time. However, Musk stated on Twitter that the push may have been a touch too strong, placing the newly launched space vehicle on a collision course with the asteroid belt. The Roadster and Starman live transmission ended less than five hours after it began, so this may be the last time we'll hear of a remarkable payload. Now, it's time to find out the working principle of the Falcon Heavy rocket. Let's get on! The Falcon Heavy has just two stages. First, there are two strap-on side boosters. It is linked to the rocket's main body on both sides. Each booster contains nine Merlin 1D engines. It is connected to the central core, which is technically the same thing, but with a little more fuel, as I will explain later. The second stage is up next. It is powered by a single Merlin 1D engine with vacuum capability. Okay, one more thing. All of the engines described run on kerosene and use liquid oxygen as an oxidizer. Now, let's get over to the liftoff process. The boosters and the center core are both fired simultaneously, bringing 27 Merlin 1D engines to life. Then, there's a swoosh. I'm now coming to the point where the different rockets get separated. The strap-on side boosters stop burning and remove after about five minutes. They then flip over, reignite, and return to Earth. The main rocket will start cruising across space, aided by the center core. 
Then, after some time, the central core burns out, detaches, reignites and returns to Earth. The solitary Merlin 1D engine, properly modified for vacuum operation, now fires and deposits the cargo in the desired orbit. The fairing, which is the upper part of the rocket, opens and the automobile is launched into what is called to be a Martian orbit. Meanwhile, the first two rockets, stacked at both left and right hand sides, will have to return to Earth, initiate their last burn during re-entry and land on two neighboring landing fields in Florida with six incredible sonic booms since they decelerate as fast as possible. After some time, the central core lands in the same fashion on a drone ship in the Atlantic Ocean. SpaceX will now be able to launch any mission that any of its rivals can launch at a far cheaper cost because it has the same upper stage and three times the first stage. The Falcon Heavy rocket has more reusability potential than Falcon 9. Some F-9 missions that require the first stage to be expended can now be replaced with Falcon Heavy missions that reuse all three initial stages. More so, even after exhausting the first stage, F-9 could not compete for several objectives. I feel that the Falcon Heavy has a large enough advantage over the next most competent heavy launcher to take on the most challenging missions while still allowing for reuse. Finally, Falcon Heavy can do missions that no other orbital launcher can, such as exhausting only the center core or all three cores. Even if it's entirely disposable, it will cost much less per mission than the SLS when it's ready. The SLS will have a higher maximum payload, but Falcon Heavy could match it with two launches and still come in at a fraction of the overall cost. I've done a brief explanation about the operation principle of the Falcon Heavy, and it's time we'll check through the most effective use that the Falcon Heavy will serve to SpaceX. The first use of the Falcon 9 is for high-altitude geo-satellite launches, like launching as 30 or 40 SpaceX own Starlink satellites constellation. Secondly, to meet the requirements of all US government launch scenarios and become a full replacement to ULA rockets. Third, to launch satellites that the Falcon 9 can launch, but its rocket fuel gets exhausted. So instead of using the Falcon 9, the Falcon Heavy will replace launches like this. And finally, the fourth is to provide sufficient performance and allow early full reuse experiments to be carried out. For instance, if 4 tons of extra recovery mass is required on the upper stage, this will directly remove 4 tons of payload capability, but since Falcon Heavy can drop over 20 tons to LEO with side boosters RTLS plus the center core ASTS, it could conceivably do an Iridium class launch and still recover the upper stage. It may even be able to launch some smaller payloads to GTO while recovering all four FH parts. What is most special about SpaceX is its ingenuity and enormous effort in moving the human race to new heights in technology and space exploration, which is our natural born instinct. SpaceX, as they say, where the stars are developed, may be the last frontier for humans to explore and possibly dominate. Without SpaceX, mankind would remain in its shell and would not be able to grow beyond Earth. SpaceX has begun a new space race, and other space companies like Blue Origin and Virgin Galactic want to compete with SpaceX to bring humans into space and push the frontiers of what humans are capable of. The Falcon Heavy rocket was a testimony to human ingenuity and space technology that had not been experienced during the Apollo mission. Before the Falcon Heavy launch, there were several concerns regarding how the Falcon Heavy would function. The engineers were particularly concerned about how the engine's vibrations might affect the triple rocket system. If the vibrations had been too intense and interfered with the launch, either ripping the rocket apart or changing its flight path, the Falcon Heavy would certainly have to be modified. This would have put us years behind schedule in our mission to Mars. Ultimately, this flight represents a minor step forward for more of what SpaceX is about to achieve, and very soon, it will be a huge step forward for humanity. What is the difference between SpaceX Falcon Heavy and Falcon 9? Be sure to check out your favorite SpaceX video here!